So this video is looking at lesson 13 sound sampling which you should be able to find in your component 1 exercise book on OneNote. So the first task that you're going to do is you're going to go to this website and you're going to watch the video and then you're going to be able to answer these four questions. So pause the video at this point, go on to your OneNote onto lesson 13, click on this link here, find the video, watch it and then answer these questions. Okay, so as you can tell, this lesson is going to be looking at representing sound. So it's going to be similar to last lesson where we looked at how binary numbers can be used to represent graphics. However, this lesson we're looking at how they, how the binary numbers can be used to represent sound. So by the end of today, you should be able to know how audio is saved on a computer to understand what sound sampling is. And we're also going to look at bit rate and bit depth as well. So just like numbers, characters and images, sound needs to be converted to binary in order to be stored on a computer. Everything essentially inside a computer is just ones and zeros or switches being switched on and off. So in order to play a sound or record a sound, um, that data, that needs to be converted into a binary um, set of numbers. So how is sound stored on a computer? Sound is converted into a digital signal by a process called sampling so me talking now i'm actually creating a sound wave and that's an analog sound wave um, but computers don't work in analog they work in digital everything has to be ones and zeros as we just said so in order to convert this analog wave into digital you have to use something called sampling so sampling is where hardware such as a microphone measures the level of sound many times per second and records this as binary digits all the binary numbers are then stored in a digital sound file. So some definitions then before we get going. Sample rate, the number of audio samples captured every second. So that's how often the sound is being sampled. The bit depth is the number of bits available for each sound clip. And we're going to look at these in more detail in a moment. The bit rate is the number of bits used per second of audio. So these are some of the key terms that are going to come up during this lesson. So what I'd like you to do at this point is to write down those definitions here. You may need to skip back on the video in order to do that, um, but I want you to make a few notes there. Leave sampling for now for this bit because we're going to come back to that in a second. So pause the video and write down your answers to the start of task one. Okay, so a little bit more about sampling then, so you can finish off task one. So the number of times a sound is sampled, so when we're talking about sampling, remember we're just talking about converting the level of the sound to a binary number. So the number of times a sound is sampled per second is called sampling frequency or sample rate, and it's measured in something called hertz. So a typical sampling frequency, one that's sort of common, is 44.1 thousand times per second. So this is known as sometimes 44.1 kilohertz per second. So we're measuring the sound 44,100 times every second. Now the higher the sample frequency, the better the quality um, of the sound. Um, so some of you maybe have downloaded music in the past and you can choose which um, sample frequency to choose um, and that will make a better quality sound. Watch this video now and you'll be able to see the difference in um, the different sample rates. Okay, so from that video, you could see that the higher the sample rate, the better the quality of the sound. So why is that? So we've got four graphs here. Looking at this one in the top left-hand corner at the moment, this is a one-second sound wave. So this is an analog sound wave of somebody saying, 
I don't know, hello or something like that. Now, if we had a high sample rate, you can see here that we've um, taken 22 samples. Obviously, this isn't realistic in terms of um, actual sample rates. Um, but if we were to take 22 samples of that sound every second, we would get this graph. If we took 11 samples of that sound a second, we would get this graph. And if we only took six we would get this bottom right hand graph down here. Now you can see that obviously the high sample rate, this graph much more closely represents this graph here. It's a lot, it's, you know, it's more similar um, compared to this one. So you can see we've got a little infliction in the sound here. You, that's completely gone on both of these two sound rates here. So this graph, the sound will sound much more like the original recorded sound because we're taking more measurements every second. So with that info you should now be able to finish off task one from your OneNote and make some more notes here about sound sampling. Pause the video and then do that. Moving on then we're going to have a look at bit depth. So bit depth is the number of bits available for each clip. So the higher the bit depth the more accurately a sound can be recorded. So you're going to get better quality but you are going to get a larger file size. Um, so the higher the bit depth means that we've got more ones and zeros to use up to represent that sound. Um, but obviously the more ones and zeros we've got, the the bigger the file's going to be because we've got to store those ones and zeros. So it works in the same way as with images when we looked at colour depth. You know, the more colours that we used, the more um, ones and zeros we needed, so the file size got bigger. So apart from being asked to give a definition of bit depth, you might also be asked to apply this to um, a certain scenario. So here's an exam question. It says, below is a representation of a simple sound wave. The wave is sampled every second and the amplitude is stored as a 4-bit binary number. So if we have a look at this graph, we have our sound wave going across here. Imagine that somebody saying hello. Um, and we've got our time in seconds going along the bottom and we've got our amplitude um, the measurement of the sound going up the side. So at one second, the amplitude, as you can see, is 6. So we would convert 6 to a binary number. So we don't need a 1, we need a 2 and a 4, and we don't need an 8. What you need to do on your OneNote is have a go at filling out the rest of this table. So on your OneNote, you'll find task 2. Have a go at filling out the rest of this table. Pause the video because I'm going to put the answers up in a minute and there's absolutely no point in cheating on this. You're only cheating yourselves. So pause the video and have a go yourself. Okay, so you should have this information here on your task two. 7251653 and then those numbers converted into binary. So if we were trying to work out how many bits and how many bytes we needed to store this information. It's not part of this question, but if we were asked to do that, then we could obviously work that out. So we know that we've got eight lots of four bits, so we've got 32 bits. If we wanted to store that in bytes, remember there are eight bits in a byte, we would divide that 32 by eight, and we would be able to store all of this information here for this sound in four bytes. So moving on back onto your OneNote, um, you should now be able to answer these questions here, mainly because I've just gone through the answers with you. I'm just going to minimise this off to the side so we've got more space. I want you now to have a go though at doing these two questions here. So what would the bit storage be if we changed it to, tan, to, tan, to 10 samples per second? So at the moment we're just doing one sample per second. If we did 10 samples per second, how much storage would we need? And then what's the effect on that? I'm thinking of the file size. Have a go at doing that now. Pause the video because I'm going to go through the answer. And again, it's nice to see how you get on. You learn by making mistakes. If you just pause it, if you don't pause it, sorry, and just write down the answers, you will never remember how to do this. If you get it wrong and then correct it, you will definitely remember how to do it. And if you get it right off, you know, first time, well done. You've already remembered it. So pause the video and then we'll go through the answers after. So this is how we'd work out how much um, storage requirement we would need if we were to sample it 10 times a second instead of just once. So we would need to do 10 times 8 times 4. So we've got 10 samples per second. We have 8 seconds of clip and we have 4 ones and zeros, 4 bits for every sample. That would equal 320 bits. 
if we wanted to write that down in bytes, we know there are 8 bits in a byte, so we do 320 divided by 8, and you would get 40 bytes. And obviously, therefore, we have a much larger file size, so we're going to need more storage. So if you've made any mistakes on that, just correct your answers now. Um, so moving on to bit rate, this is the number of bits used per second of audio. So the bit rate of a file tells us how many bits of data are processed every second, and they are normally measured in kilobits per second, KBPS. So to calculate a bit rate, we need to do the frequency, the sample frequency, multiplied by the bit depth. And we've just looked at what bit depth was. If the audio is stereo, which means that it uses two channels, like a left speaker and a right speaker, then you're going to need to multiply that by two. Um, if it's just a mono sound, then we don't need to do that. Okay, so if it says it's stereo, then you're going to need to multiply that by two. So here's an example of then how to calculate a bit rate. So remember, it's the frequency, our sample frequency, multiplied by the bit depth. So if we had a 22,000 hertz sample frequency and we had a bit depth of 8 bits then we would multiply those together and we would get 176,000 ones and zeros 176,000 bits or 176 kilobits per second remember kilo 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 just means a thousand so when you see a kilobit kilobyte kilobit it means a thousand so we can just knock off the thousands there and write it as 176 kilobits per second so if we were then to find out what file size that would create so how much storage we would need we're going to need to know how long the clip is so for this imagine that we've got a 60 second a one minute audio clip the way that we can work out the file size is by doing the following we have 60 seconds and each second, remember because this is kilobits per second, we have 176,000 bits. So doing the maths, that is 10 and a half million bits. So if we then wanted to work that out in bytes, because you know talking about 10.56 million bits is a bit unrealistic. If we wanted to work that out in bytes, then we would divide that by 8 and we would get 1.3 million bytes. Still quite a big number to be kind of discussing when talking about computer storage. We might want to store it as kilobytes. So we could divide that number by a thousand. Remember, kilo is a thousand. And we could say that it's actually 1,320 kilobytes that we would need to store that sound. We could, of course, store that in megabytes as well. So we could divide that again by a thousand and we'd get 1.3 megabytes. Um, which is probably something that we're more familiar with talking about, you know, an audio clip being three or four megabytes rather than 10.5 million bits. But essentially, they're the same thing. So, what I want you to do on your OneNote is to now answer um, these questions here. Make some notes on bit rates. You might need to go back on the video. Calculate the bit rate that we've just gone through. You might want to have a go on your own. Um, if you're struggling, just write it down from the PowerPoint. Same with the file storage size. And then have a go on your own at recalculating that if the sound was 44.1 kilohertz and it was a 16-bit depth sound. So pause the video now and have a go at doing that, please. Okay, so I want you to check your answers and to make any corrections that you might need to make. Pause the video so you can have a little look. Right, so for the rest of the tasks on this lesson, there are some extension tasks which I want you all to have a go at because we have the time. I want you to watch these videos and I want you to write down what metadata you might find in an audio file. If you're struggling, if you go back to last week's lesson, I believe I gave the answer in that lesson. Then have a go at doing these summary questions here and have a little... Um, I believe actually that is the video that we've already shown you, so you don't need to watch that video back. No, so you can ignore that video at the bottom and just have a go at doing these, unless you want to go back and have another look at it. Okay, finally then, um, you may notice that now a new section has appeared at the bottom of the page. What, rather than move on to compression and things like that, being as we're back at school next week, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to create a knowledge organiser which covers everything we've done so far from lesson one how computers work up to lesson 13 
I would recommend doing this on paper, taking a photograph of it and trying to upload it to your OneNote. Um, if you can't do that, bring it with you next week and we can do it when we're in school. However, you should be able to do that, you computer science students. I'm sure you can take a photo and upload it somehow, um, be that by sending it to your OneDrive first or whatever you need to do. Um, but try and make this knowledge organiser nice and detailed and useful when it comes to revision. Um, because we're probably not going to you know, cover this for a while now. Um, so when you come back to it, it'll be really, really helpful. So use the remaining part of the lesson to do as much as you can on that knowledge organiser. If you don't finish, that's absolutely fine. Don't work overtime. Just upload wherever you got up to and we can add to it at a later date.